Hello, I'm Anton Bennett um, from Harrogate and Ripon Beekeepers Association. And I just want to give a little bit of an introduction about why we as an association started a campaign to get people to write to our local MPs, calling on government to put in place a new and effective plan for dealing with the Asian hornet threat and why we'd like to see that campaign rolled out nationwide. For some time now, as I'm sure you're all aware, beekeepers across the country have been recognising the need for there to be a proper thought, properly thought out and comprehensive Asian hornet action plan that's able to deal with not just the current level of threat we've seen in recent years, but is also able to deal with the increasing levels of Asian hornet incursions we expect to see in years to come. To that end, at the BBKA de annual delegates meeting in 2022, Hampshire BKA raised a proposition that the BBKA call on the government to have such a plan in place by the end of 2022. It was a proposition we at Arrogant Ripon strongly supported, but we did have an amendment that was accepted to that proposition to make the deadline by the end of June 2022. I know we thought that was a very tight and optimistic deadline and perhaps an unrealistic one, but I think we wanted to communicate to government just how urgent a matter beekeepers across the country felt this to be. And to that end, I know that Anne Robbery, on behalf of the BBKA, has put in a lot of work liaising with government at all tiers up to and including ministerial level. However, at every turn, it seems, the government's response has basically been, we have a plan in place and it's working. I'm sure most of you will know that what that plan involves is the National Bee Unit being able to draw on bee inspectors from across the country to provide sufficient manpower to track, trace, and identify Asian hornet nests and to destroy them as and when they're identified. And in all fairness to the National Bee Unit, they have done a fantastic job thus far in dealing with that threat. But the big question for us is, what happens when that number of incursions and subsequently nests overwhelms the NBU's capacity to respond? If we just take a quick look at some of the numbers, and these are the figures that have been reported by DEFRA, not for all Asian hornet sightings, but just for the number of nests that have been identified and destroyed in recent years. So recording began in 2016, when there was one nest. In 2017, one nest. 2018, there was a bit of a surge with four nests. In 2019, two. 2020, one. 2021, there were two nests, and there was one nest last year identified and destroyed. As of the 22nd of August this year, there have been 15 nests, and that number, I believe, is still continuing to rise, with many of those nests not yet dealt with or destroyed. And the thing is, in dealing with this number of incursions, this number of nests, the NBU has had to suspend all but emergency essential services in dealing with foul brood and to cancel training events that it had arranged to give to local associations. So it seems to me that we have reached that tipping point that we knew was coming sooner or later, where the resources of the NBU are insufficient to deal with the level of threat that we are seeing now on the ground. And if this year just one or two secondary nests get missed and produce queens and we have a mild winter, who can say the number of nests that we might see next year? The big concern for us is if we have reached that tipping point where the MBU can no longer be possibly expected to deal with it, with it and contain the spread of Asian hornets in this country, with the resources it currently has available to it, what happens then? Is the government going to turn around and say, well, we tried, we did our best, but now it's down to you 
as, as local key, beekeepers to find ways of coping with the Asian hornet themselves, with all the disastrous consequences that that will have, not just for honeybees, but also for all our native invertebrate fauna. And that's why we think it, that it is imperative that we do everything that we can now to keep pressure on government to implement a new, properly resourced and integrated plan that will allow us to at least control Asian hornets in the years to come. And so to look at that in some more detail and to think about some of the things that that plan really should be needing to address, I'd like to pass you on to my colleague at, at Harrogate River Beekeepers and on, and on the Asian Hornet Action Team, Mike Robottom. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, right. Hi, my name is Mike Robottom. I'm a member of Harrogate and Ripon Beekeepers Association, um, also a member at York Association, York and District. Uh, I fully endorse what Anton has just said about the need for a new strategy to control Asian hornets properly staffed. And one possible suggestion would be to have, say, a uh, seasonal hornet controller, uh, like a sort of seasonal bee inspector, but to uh, look after the hornets. And what we really need is a new attitude, perhaps, uh, for helping to control hornets that um, Beekeepers, um, do. at the moment, uh, beekeepers thoroughly accept that we have some obligation to help deal with swarms of bees. And I think most associations, all associations, have a scheme to make sure that swarms of bees are dealt with. But I think what we need to do is in, encourage DEFRA in particular to think that beekeepers are another resource that can be used uh, in the campaign. Um, and that you know the attitude of beekeepers is yes, we do help to control Asian hornets uh, as much as we try and deal with swarms. Just a different, just an extended attitude. The other thing that would be useful to have uh, as part of the plan would be some really practical research. And I'm not sure to what extent we could do this, but uh, if the plan were to include. Uh, looking at the predators of Asian hornets, I'm not sure how exhausted that is. And also, um, possibly better ways to kill nests, better ways to find nests, uh, and better traps just to catch specifically uh, Asian hornets. I'm very concerned about some of the traps. They collect a whole range of species, and we're actually doing a lot of damage ourselves to the native species. Um, and other things that in the same area for research might be looking at traps on ferries and also a, trap, a better trapping policy around uh, ports. And we do need DEFRA to manage this. Now there's one preliminary item that is quite small in a respect, but it will be essential if we are going to try and control the hornets. And that is this question of arising out of non-native species where they very sensible policy has always been never to let non-native species go if you've caught them for fear that this is just making the problem worse. And that is applied uh, with the exception of some authorities to the seasonal bee inspectors uh, to the Asian hornet so that if I were to go and assist uh, the NBU in dealing with uh, a, Haitian, a swarm I would be committing a offence if I were to release back into the environment, an Asian hornet that had already been trapped. Now, although it's a good principle in general, in the circumstances where you're trying to use Asian hornets to tell you where their nests are, there seems to be an absolute minimal risk of letting one worker hornet go to rejoin the thousands. It's really a matter of just letting a few Asian hornets go in the interest of killing thousands or tens of thousands as soon as you can find the nest. Now I did raise this specifically with DEFRA through my MP and it was just completely ignored. So that caused me some concern, but it is a preliminary item that we shall need to deal with. I think the way to DEFRA is to work with, um, through the MPs for your constituency. There are 
beekeepers in every constituency in the land. So if we really got our act together, there would be, in principle, 650 MPs all tackling DEFRA. A more reasonable target might be 300 to 350. And this system does work, and it has worked for beekeepers in the past. Going back into the early 00s, somebody in DEFRA hit on the idea that we ought to deregulate European fowl brood, which, of course, has been regulated in the England and Wales since the 1940s. Um, beekeepers just got their act together, and we had a mass writing to MPs, as a result of which this policy was very quietly dropped, and also the associated minister was very quietly dropped with it. So we do have some sort of reputation in Whitehall that beekeepers, if they ask for something reasonable, they will eventually get it. So we do have this history of success. That was one. We had another one where um, the financial authorities were very keen to dismantle bee disease insurance as an insurance company, mainly because it gave them a lot of hassle for a very small business. And again, a very successful letter writing campaign was initiated. And we still have bee disease insurers operating as we know. So we do have a successful thing. And the other pressure we can put on beekeepers, on the, sorry, the MPs, is that no um, MP would like to get his local newspaper having the headline, local MP snubs beekeepers. So I think well, if you do write to your MP, there's always some pressure from that direction that they really want to keep beekeepers on the side. So that's really my main point. I think we do need uh, to get this campaign going. And the very successful way to do it is to write to your MP. It's rather a laborious, laborious system and you've just got to stick at it. The first reply you get may not address the issue, but you just have to write again, and if necessary, again. And sooner or later, the system will kick into action and we should be able to get some movement in the direction that Anton is proposing. So that's, that's my contribution, really. Right. Uh, thanks, Mike. I, my name's Tony Brisby, and I am Asian Hornet Team Coordinator for Harrogus and Ripon Beekeepers Association. Um, just to pick up on the points that, that uh, Mike and Anton have both made, a couple of things stand out to me. Um, one is the issue of the Asian Hornet isn't just an issue for beekeepers. It goes far beyond that. Um, it needs to involve other people, and involve, in, involving other people it requires a degree of coordination and actually initiative from the top. And the other thing is that uh, the government has said, DEFRA has said regularly, that we have got an Asian Hornet um, strategy, we've got a non-native species strategy, but I think it's really important to emphasise that a one size fits all does not apply to the Asian hornet. The Asian hornet is a very, very unusual invasive pest. Uh, it's not a gray squirrel, uh, it's not a Japanese knotweed. Um, catching, as Mike said, catching an Asian hornet worker and releasing it isn't going to increase the numbers of Asian hornets. It's going to make it much easier for the nest to be identified and destroyed. So the strategy needs to be revisited and thought through in the light of what we knew about the Asian hornet when it was developed in 2016, but also in the light of what's happening at the moment, because what's happening at the moment is a couple of things going on. One is it's suddenly hotting up. Um, Asian hornets are suddenly being identified in the south of England, nest found and discovered. And as Anton said, if we miss one nest, then all of a sudden we can find we've got an incursion. Um, and the other thing is that the amount of knowledge about the Asian hornet is changing. Um, we're, we're having to learn quite fast, we're having to learn quite fast on our feet, but methods of catching, releasing, identifying, trapping, destroying nests are all improving, and the strategy needs to reflect the fact that the knowledge base is not the same as it was sort of 10, 15, 20 years ago. So a new strategy is crucial. My YMPs, um, which I think is probably the thoughts going through everybody's heads, well, one thing is, as I said, we need to involve more people than just beekeepers. But the other thing is that if you write, if you write to your MP and if you use a particular format, he or she will reply. They actually have to reply. Now, we write to our local MP and we get a reply and we write again and we get another reply. And that kind of doesn't shift anything very much. 
if beekeepers all over the country are writing to MPs, then as Mike said, uh, we've got form in this. We've actually got a track record of mounting a really successful campaign um, that actually shifts things. Now, why MPs at the moment? Well, there are a couple of reasons why MPs at the moment. Uh, one is that, as we all know, a general ele election is on the horizon, and MPs are, how can I put this, sensitive to the feelings of their constituents. So it's a really, really good time. And the other is that DEFRA has a bit of free time, which it hasn't had before, because of not having to make a bonfire of all the previous EU regulations. That's been filed in the two hard box. Um, and consequently, there is capacity for actually revisiting some of these processes. So now is a really good time to write to MPs. In fact, it's an absolutely outstanding time to write to MPs for all these reasons. What we've done is draft a letter, um, an outline letter with some suggestions about what you might say and details of how to contact your MP and details of what to pin it. <laughs> that's Mike's phone, that's my, Mike's phone ringing, that's all right. Um, and information about how to find your MP, some suggestions about what you might say, what kind of information you need to put in about yourself. And that letter is on the BBKA website. And I would urge you really strongly to have a look at it. Minimal effort, send it off. You get a, a reply back to your MP. If you haven't got the energy or the time to follow up in that, don't worry, because this is a numbers game. It would be great if you could do the follow up, but don't feel that you have to. Just get the letter off in the first place. And I think between us, we do actually stand a chance of making a difference. Okay, I just refer you to the website and thank you for listening. Thank you too.